I'm Mike Hanawald, field agronomist with Bex Hybrids, and standing here in front of a cornfield. And uh, tassels are just starting to, to come out in this field. It's just getting starting pollinating. And along with that comes questions about uh, corn fungicide. And I've been getting several of those questions and hoping to answer some here in this, this video. So um, first thing we want to talk about is growth stage of the corn and when we need to start, start scouting and taking a look. So if you look at our two-year PFR data, where we look at um, fungicide timing, you'll see that R1 is our most profitable um, timing for applying fungicide. So R1 is the silking stage, uh, which is when, when the silks are emerging. Um, it's also associated with VT, which is tassel emergence. They normally happen sim simultaneously in most corn hybrids. So VT R1 is when it's been most profitable in PFR over the last two years. However, uh, we have seen at individual sites and individual locations in that testing that when the disease comes in a little bit later, applying a fungicide just prior to that disease um, tends to be more profitable. And so I'm not afraid of waiting a little bit past tassel um, to apply that fungicide specifically when you don't have a lot of disease in the field. Um, the other benefit we get by waiting until after pollination is it reduces our risk of potentially um, increasing vomitoxin levels in the fall if we get gibberella ear mold in the corn. And so spraying um, after pollination does not mean you won't get vomitoxin, but it also does, and spraying during pollination doesn't mean that you will. But if we spray after pollination, at least we know that there's nothing we've done to increase those vomitoxin levels. So as far as checking for disease, so um, when we're out looking at the corn, we want to look um, from the ear leaf um, on up in the, in the corn. We want to look at the upper, upper part of the canopy um, because the lower leaves are not very productive once you get out in the field and, and are, are not um, producing that much. So we're not as concerned about those. Plus, we almost always tend to get a gray leaf spot in the lower leaves. And really, for the most part, um, so far across uh, northern Ohio and northeast Indiana, that's all I've been seeing so far is a little bit of gray leaf spot. Um, in the lower lower part of the canopy. Corn seems to be fairly fairly healthy. So uh, gray leaf spot are the small rectangular lesions that stay between the veins. Um, they're more of a brown color actually, contrary to the name, um, but you can see that on your screen. And that's uh, contrasted with uh, northern corn leaf blight, which tends to be longer, uh, wider lesions um, that you uh, tend to see there. And then obviously the, the big one that's the, the main talk of uh, uh, what people are concerned about is tar spot being the newer disease that you can see there, uh, the black spots across the, across the leaves. And so um, those are the diseases that we're looking for. And uh, we've had conditions conducive to disease though. So we wanna be watching pretty close here with these humid days that we've been having and then cooler nights that uh, give us a lot of heavy dews in the mornings. Um, those conditions are, are conducive to disease development. Um, that, that moisture on the leaves, the more hours of moisture that we have, the more um, our higher our probability is of, of getting getting some disease. So want to be on the lookout for that. When you do to make the decision to spray, um, you want to go out and uh, if you have the flexibility to apply in the morning, the morning is a little bit more profitable. We're seeing about a $10 per acre um, ROI advantage spraying in the morning versus in the afternoon. But I know that we're oftentimes at the mercy of custom applicators, whether that's a plane or a sprayer. And so uh, we may not be able to get it covered in the morning and getting it done at the right time is more important than necessarily spraying in the morning. Um, the other thing to consider if you're using a ground rig, uh, a high sprayer to go through the field, um, 15 to 20 gallons. Give, increasing our gallons of water that we have increases our, our coverage and helps us to get a little bit better results uh, that way. Um, our PFR proven fungicides, we've got eight of them uh, that we're up to now. Basically, the key takeaway is multiple modes of action. Um, using, choosing a fungicide that gives you um, at least two, if not three modes of action is gonna give you the best results and the longest uh, residual opportunity there. Last thing I wanna mention is something that um, we haven't talked about for several years, um, but it's starting to, to pop up a little bit this year. And so we just wanna be on the lookout and that's Western bean cutworm. So uh, Western bean cutworm is a moth. Um, and then the moth moves in and lays its eggs in our cornfields. Um, they tend to lay their eggs from past history um, they lay their eggs just before the field tassels. And Ohio State has a network of traps that the extension agents have been, have been monitoring. And um, this week's uh, trap update showed that the moths are getting near their peak flights. And so if we have later planted cornfields that haven't tasseled yet, we wanna be on the lookout for those. So what to look for is you walk in the field and you're looking in the upper third of the canopy and you're looking for dime-sized egg masses. So they're about the size of a dime with 30 to 50 eggs in them. And uh, you can see what that looks like there in the picture. And, uh, but those dime size egg masses um, are where the, those eggs that the moths lay and then um, they will hatch. They'll turn purple just before they hatch. And then once they hatch, um, they crawl on the leaves for a week to 10 days eating the excess pollen. And then will eventually move to the ear and do some damage to the ear. 
And it's not just the kernels that you lose from these, um, the worms that uh, are chewing on the ear. It's also that they open up that ear and provide an entry point for um, further disease, um, such as, as ear molds that uh, we know can be problematic. So um, something to keep an eye out for. If you see those egg masses, it'd probably be a good idea to add an insecticide uh, when you spray your, your fungicide application. Um, the, if you have corn with the Viptera trait, that does protect against western bean cutworms. So those fields, you wouldn't need to worry about adding an insecticide. Um, but outside of the Viptera trait, any other hybrids um, are going to be susceptible to that. And so you'll need to keep an eye on that. And uh, your Bex dealer would be happy to help you um, know which hybrids you need to keep track of um, based on the trait that you have. So if you have any questions about these or any other agronomic topics, feel free to reach out to myself or your local Bex representative, and we'd be happy to help. Thank you very much. Thank you.